Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, How to Order Custom Mapa Heat Mats. We have some brief housekeeping before we start. Your phones are muted. If you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A box in the corner of your screen, and we'll answer them at the end of today's session, time permitting, or we'll get the, to them via an email afterwards. And you can always send questions to Mapay Digital at mapay.com. And we also invite you to visit the Mapa Heat Floor Heating Systems product page on our website, where you'll find detailed instructions, grid paper, brochures, technical data sheets, trainings, and more. Now, without further delay, I'd like to introduce one of today's speakers, Sonia Mosti. Sonia has been launching products for more than 20 years. Her career in manufacturing began in plastics, where she launched several lines of food service packaging products for Dart Container Corporation. Sonia has been working at MAPE since 2005, and she led the resurgence of North American Adhesives brand. Today, she's the product manager for crack isolation and sound reduction and floor heating membranes. And we are also very grateful to be joined today by a special guest, Dan Devine with Invents Area Sales Manager, and he's based in Greater Philadelphia area. So welcome, Dan. Thank you for joining us. So with that, I welcome them both to the microphone. I guess, Sonia, you're starting, so the floor is yours. Very good. Uh, good day, everyone. I'm happy to be here, and thanks for coming to our webinar. So today we're going to be talking about floor heating and specifically um, how to order custom floor heated mats, which is something that MAPE offers, which is very unique in the industry. I'm going to get started um, briefly, and I'm just going to kind of um, talk about floor heating in general first. Um, so uh, where, where and why does somebody want to do floor heating in their home? Um, well, there's a lot of locations that people do floor heating, and you can see some of them here. Um, kitchens and bathrooms are very common. Um, even shower benches can be heated. Shower floors, basements, and mudrooms. You might be wondering, well, um, how can you put electric in a, a wet environment? But these products that we'll be talking about today are um, UL rated for wet environments, so they can go in showers and bathrooms. Um, additional applications are things like four season rooms, spa-like environments, your kitchen countertop if it's stone, um, and it's also a complement or it can replace other heating solutions. So it could replace baseboard heaters, hydronic heaters, or even forced air heating. You could heat your home, your entire home with the kind of systems that we'll be talking about. And these um, systems work under a variety of finished flooring types. So it can go under tile or stone, laminate, engineered wood, or even luxury vinyl tile or luxury vinyl plank. So Floor heating is fantastic if you want this very comfortable luxury feel to a room. Um, if you have forced air heating, I'm in South Florida and we have forced air heating here. It doesn't get that cold here, but oftentimes in the winter when I turn on the heater, it only will heat the one side of the room where that vent is and the other side of the room is cold. Um, I'm sure this, this would happen to any home that has um, forced air heating, or if you have um, a baseboard heater, that side of the room is the side that'll get warm and the rest of the room is cold. You might actually have to turn your heater up so that you can get the other cold side warm enough. So with floor heating, because it's in the floor and it rises, it's quiet, there's the air, you know, there's no allergens floating around. It's just a very comfortable way to heat a home. And we find that once a customer has floor heating in their main home. It's usually up north, but when they build their second home, even if it's in Florida or Georgia or somewhere where it's warmer, if they're used to floor heating in their primary home, they demand it in their second home. It's, it's that kind of an addictive um, product. It, pro it provides a lot of luxury to your living um, arrangement. So um, before I get into custom, heated mats. I'm going to just give an overview of all the products that we offer here at MAPE. Um, on the screen, you'll see MAPA Heat Mat, which is a pre-built mat, and you can see an image of it. It's kind of a, it's a, like a fiberglass um, fabric with the pre-wire 
already embedded in the fabric. We offer 70 different sizes and squares and rectangles. MAPA heat membrane is um, a, a plastic uncoupling membrane where you snap cable wires in. This is a very common solution. You can um, adjust the size of your membrane on the day of installation um, and snap your cable in depending on what kind of heat output you want. You can put the cables closer together or further apart and you have a variety of different um, heating outputs, 10, 12, or 15 watts per square foot. The next option <clears throat> is MAPA heat cable. So this is if you want the cable to go directly over your substrate and you don't need an uncoupling membrane. We have cable guides that can be um, installed around the perimeter of the room and then you um, run your cable and then you would self-level over top of the cables. And then lastly, we have MAPA heat mesh, which is also adjustable on site it's a, the, the cable's already embedded in the mesh, and then you cut the mesh and you can kind of roll it out and, and turn it and, and be able to do a room this way. And we offer 10 different sizes of MAPA heat mesh. But specifically what we're gonna talk about today are, those are products that we stock. Now what we don't stock are custom mats because they're custom made to order. Um, briefly, I did also want to mention thermostats are very important, and we offer three, three kinds of thermostat. Uh, ThermoConnect, which is our Wi-Fi thermostat. It also um, connects to smart home, um, uh, smart home systems like Google Assist, so you can talk to, I don't want to say her name, A-L-E-X-A, because then mine will go off. Um, <laughs> but um, it works with her. Um, we also have Thermo Touch, which is a touchscreen seven day programmable thermostat. And then we also have Thermo Basic, which is just your basic thermostat, just up and down, real easy to use. So just wanted to mention that we have those and those do have built in GFCIs. So now we're gonna talk about how to order a custom mat. This is a fantastic product. Um, on the day of installation, you could just imagine you, you, your mat arrives and it is super easy to install. You don't have to do any thinking. You don't have to worry about how you're gonna run your cable, how you're gonna roll the mat out. It's custom made for your room. It can go around curves and angles. We can even put holes in them for um, uh, drainage vents, say in your uh, drainage um, in your shower. And they are custom manufactured in California within five to seven days of a final approved CAD drawing, which we're gonna talk about in a little while. <clears throat> so how would, if, if you're a contractor, or a homeowner, and you're wondering, well, how do I order a custom mat from a pay? How, do, how, do, how does a contractor or a homeowner do this? Um, we, don't, we don't take orders directly from a contractor or a homeowner. We take orders, we, we, our, our customers are our distributors. So the first thing as a contractor or homeowner you, you would need to do is find a distributor near you, find them a pay distributor. And we do have on our website, there is a where to buy section. So right here, where to buy, you would click where to buy and you'd put in your zip code. And up comes the list of distributors in your area. So I put in Newark, New Jersey. And three, I did a screen, screen grab and three shows up, three showed up. There's actually a lot more in, in Newark, New Jersey, but the screen, the screen grab just allowed me to show these three, Dow Tile, Morris Tile, or American Olean. So you would contact one of those distributors and let them know that you want to order a MAPA heat custom mat and they will work with you to um, they will work with you on that process. If you wanted to search in Canada, you can also search in Canada. And I just did Toronto, for instance, and um, you can see the, some of the distributors that are in Canada. So once you have your distributor lined up, this is the process to order the custom mat. So number one, find them a pay distributor to work with, check. Next, you're gonna have to draw the room. Now, this is an important step. Um, you can draw the room on a napkin. Uh, you can draw the room preferably on what we call grid paper, which you can download from our website. Um, you could provide us a professional CAD drawing or an architectural drawing, it doesn't matter. And Dan Devine with New Heat is going to, um, in a little while, run us through the process on some helpful tips on how to draw your room. Because you want to draw it in a way to avoid back and forth between CAD drawings. Because every time you, there's a CAD drawing, we need the customer to 
uh, give the final approval. If there's something off, it has to go back. It could be a day or two to get that adjustment. And then, you know, we have to do another CAD drawing. We're happy to do another CAD drawing, but it just, it, it takes a couple days every time you do a change. So you want to try to get that room drawing for, right the first time. Then um, the distributor would submit the drawing to MAPE. And in the USA, they would submit it to MAPAHEAT USA at MAPE.com. And in Canada, they would submit it to MAPAHEAT Canada at MAPE.com. It's very important that when that first submission comes to us, that, it, uh, that you indicate the name of your MAPE distributor so that we know who we're going to be running the order through. Um, and you also need to um, include the ship to address. So where's this, this map gonna be shipped to? Contact information, name, phone number, email, that kind of stuff. Without this kind of information, um, we could then quote incorrect freight costs. It could delay processing and there could be delivery mistakes. So this point number four is very important. So we take the customer's drawing and we're gonna convert that drawing into a CAD drawing. There's no cost to do this to the customer at all. Um, then we will send the quote back to the distributor within about 48 hours. Um, and this is 48 hours of having all that completed information. So once we have all that complete information, we will send that quote plus the CAD drawing to the distributor. We wanna be uh, very clear that we do not send the quotes directly to contractors or homeowners. We will send the quote to the distributor and then in point number seven, the distributor is going to provide that price to the contractor or the homeowner and get that customer's approval on that final CAD drawing. The, um, then the contractor or the homeowner is gonna place their order with the distributor, and then the distributor is gonna place their order with us. And the custom mat is produced after that production ready CAD drawing is approved. And that, and sometimes that will they'll will go into production within hours of receiving that final production ready CAD drawing. The custom mat is then sent to the customer within seven to ten business days via UPS to the desired ship to address. And number twelve, very important, all orders are final. There are no refunds because these are custom made products. And once once we get a go and we get the order and we get the approval on the final production ready CAD drawing that mat is going into production and um, and so at that point there are costs on all sides being incurred so there are no um, refunds on once that final CAD drawing is sent in and there'll be an opportunity to ask questions um, at the end of this so feel free to hold your question um, and then we can take some questions in a little while I just wanted to give you a sense of how much does it cost to order a custom mat so um, this is just kind of median market pricing. Um, pricing will vary by your region and by your market. And certainly you, you would need to check with your distributor or your retailer for actual pricing. Um, but this is just kind of an example um, of pricing for 120 volt custom mat. So it's priced in basically 10 square foot increments. So there's ranges. So if you're the, the, the first, the smallest mat is seven and a half to 10 square feet. So that mat might cost you around $310. And using the 10 square foot number, that comes to a price of $31 per square foot. Now that's a high, high cost because it's a small mat. The larger you get, you get some economies of scale and the price per square foot comes down. So for instance, let's look at the largest mat um, is between 91 and 100 square feet. That, might, that mat would run probably around $1,460 and the price per square foot is around $14.60. So you can see the larger that you get in the mat, um, um, the price per square foot comes down. Um, if you need larger mats than 100 square feet, then you would jump into a 240 volt mat, and there the maximum size limit is 200 square feet. Um, I'm gonna um, let Dan talk for a second about you there's some size limitations to the manufacturing process and um, in some cases the system or the CAD drawing would uh, chop the mat in two I understand make two right yes thanks son hello everybody 
Yeah, you, what Sonia has posted here on the page, starting at seven and a half square feet, is going to be the 120 volt listing. As you run up to 100 square feet, that's going to be for one piece of actual matting that's going to have one lead wire running off of a corner back to where you would terminate to a thermostat location. If you were to order that mat at 240 volt, the smallest 240 volt mat that would be available would be 15 square feet going all the way up to 200 square feet in one piece of a custom mat. You can have multiple custom mats in a space all hooked back up to one thermostat and the limiting factor there is going to be 15 amps of draw per thermostat per voltage. So once we have our limits of how much the size of the actual mat can be, then you have to look at the machine size at the factory. The factory has a, a grid that we're gonna be printing out this electric wire onto the fabric blanket to be able to make this mat. And that machine is 140 inches by 290 inches. So these are the square footage ranges that you will be able to look in and get pricing. When you get your drawing back, you may notice that it's two mats um, and you're like, well, it's less than 200 square feet. Why isn't it one mat at 240 volt? And it could be that that particular space is actually larger than the machine at the factory and that's why it has to be cut into two mats. The best way to do that is just to get your drawing in so that then the designers can then draw that. They'll tell you exactly how many mats are needed to fill that space and they'll be able to get you that quote back with the accurate pricing based on this chart that Sonia has prepared for you. Perfect. Great explanation. Thanks, so um, they're also, in addition to the charge for the mat itself, um, Dan had mentioned it comes with a cold lead. The standard or the default length of the cold lead coming off the mat is 10 feet in length. And depending on where the thermostat is in the room, the mat might require a longer than 10 feet lead. Um, so if there is more needed, there is a cost of around $9 per foot up to a maximum of 22 feet. And when you get that production ready CAD drawing, it looks like something on the right here, the length of the lead will be shown on the drawing and you'll be charged accordingly. You won't be charged for the first 10 feet, but anything over 10 feet around $9 per foot. Um, so next I'm gonna turn it over to Dan and we're gonna talk about how to draw a room. <laughs> All right, great, thanks, Tanya. Yes, measuring for a custom product, won't be any more fun than you'll find right here with a map of heat custom mat so this is your grid paper this is the best way to present a room back to get the most accurate results of course sign you said on a napkin you could provide drawings and that's accurate pretty much any paper that you could potentially put a pencil or a pay or um, a pen to absolutely do that but here with the grid you would um, be able to download this from a pay.com so that you could have this print this out and then be able to use that to draw the perimeter of the room on this to then send this back in. There are, everything that we talk about today as far as details, there are some notes on the right-hand side of this grid paper, which would be another good reason to take this onto your job. You have some just notes to, um, to look at and some details to kind of remind you of things to look for when you're measuring for a custom mat. So sign in next slide. So here, when we look about measuring for a custom mat, the number one, thing you want to think about is we're going to measure the perimeter of the room. We're not measuring the, what we want the mat size to be. That's probably your number one point where you want to remember we're measuring the perimeter. So when you walk into a room, we're actually going to be drawing the perimeter of the space and then we're going to measure every single wall within that space. So when you walk in, you're going to measure the entire perimeter before writing any dimensions down so that you get a drawing that looks somewhat like this. And then we're gonna be filling in every single dimension when we measure it around the room. So you start in a corner, doesn't matter what corner you start in really. And here would be the top left-hand corner where we're gonna start and we're gonna go from there and we're gonna measure over to the shower drain. Now, if you go to the next slide, I do believe there is a dimension there that shows that that dimension would be 88 inches. Now, it's good to remember that we keep the same number. So we don't wanna say 88 inches and then on the next dimension we do a foot or two feet. That can get confusing for the designer of, of what we're trying to tell them that the length is. So 
my recommendation is to stay in inches. And then when you're measuring out at that 88, you'll find that, you know, in reality, the world is not always to, to the whole inch. So you are going to need to have a rule of thumb as what you're going to write down. My recommendation is that you round to the nearest quarter inch of what you see on that tape measure. If you do that, that'll give you the most detailed perimeter dimension that you can find. The reason why that's important is because the room needs to all add up in the CAD program and for us to be able to build that mat to be able to ship it out to your job site. So in this case, when we start from left to right over to that shower curb, we would get there, it would be 88 and you're gonna round to the nearest quarter inch. You're then gonna then go down that curb and that next dimension there, at 80, 18 inches and then 20 inches and then another 18 inches. And you can kind of see, you go around the perimeter and, and just measure that wall, write it down, measure the next wall, write it down. All the way, even when you get into, say an entry into a toilet room, the width of a two by four is three and a half inches. You may think that that's insignificant, but we do need that dimension. So once again, measuring every single dimension around that perimeter. So as we go to the next slide, you'll see how, well, there's an angle on the front of that shower. So this particular angle probably would not come back with questions because there's a lot of other 90 degree angles in that space to allow our designers to lock in what that room should look like in a CAD program. But say we lived in an octagon house. Well, we would wanna do what we call an angle lock. So what we're showing here is we would want to take a dimension from that angle back to a, a true 90 degree angle in a room. So 90 degrees would always be a corner of a room. So if we start from a corner of a room and go over to those angles and we show and then you'd write the dimension down of that angle, then our designers will be able to say that line's now locked in because you've made a triangle. And then we know exactly what that angle is going to be so that we know exactly um, how that mat needs to look and be able to fit into that space. So that's kind of just a look in an angle lock. In this situation, it may or may not have been needed, but if you have a lot of angles in your space, that is how you would represent an angle in order to be able to get an accurate drawing. So the next one, once we've kind of gone around the entire perimeter, and we've written down every single dimension all the way around. I can't stress how important that is because we wanna make sure that we know where all of the walls are in the room. Even if you don't have drywall on that room yet, so say the room has been demoed and you only have studs up and no drywall, I would still measure stud to stud, even though I know there's gonna be drywall and then trim, what happens with these dimensions is our designers will then pull off all of the perimeter dimensions about an inch and a half to be able to make sure that that mat is gonna fit perfectly when it comes out of the box. So after you get done with the perimeter dimensions, you wanna tell us what's in that space. So it's really important with electric radiant floor heat that you measure to the front of the toe kick of the vanity because heat does not migrate horizontally more than about two to three inches from the edge of the mat. So in this case, that vanity, you're gonna tell us the overall width and then you're gonna tell us about what off that back wall to the front of the toe kick that dimension would be. In this case, it's 18 inches off that back wall to the front of the toe kick on the vanity. The other part, the other important part here in that other little room, the toilet room is going to be to the center of the flange of the toilet. Now, to note this on the drawing, you're gonna have an arrow and the arrow is gonna point in the direction that the toilet would be facing the room so that we know the direction of the toilet, so that's your arrow. Now, you'll put another line down through the circle of where the flange would be, and you're gonna take a measurement off the back wall to center of flange, and then you're gonna take from center of flange over to one of the side walls so that we can locate where that toilet flange is in that space. And then last, you always wanna then look around the room and ask yourself, are there any floor vents going to be in this space? Now, sometimes when you measure for a custom mat, the HVAC contractor may have not been there yet. So it's always a good idea to remind and ask yourself, where is the heat vent or the cooling vent in this room? There's a lot of forced air and cooling now coming down from the ceiling, which kind of eliminates this problem. But if you have a floor vent in the floor, you want to then note that so that we can cut that out of the custom mat. So in this case, you would then tell us the size of the rectangle of the floor vent. 
and then you're going to tell us how far off the wall that that rectangle is from one off the wall and then you're going to tell us from the other wall where that is so that we can locate that rectangle within that space so basically anything you want to think about you're going to measure the perimeter of room first and then you're going to tell us about the obstructions that may be in the space like a toilet like a floor vent or like the footprint of the vanity so Sonia, as we go to the next slide you get a little bit closer up of showing you what that actually looks like showing you the vanity and then notice that word vanity that's on the drawing it's good to give as much detail as possible to the designer so they know what that rectangle is say we draw a rectangle on that drawing and we don't tell them what it is well they don't know if it's a vanity they don't know if it's a, a wardrobe or a piece of furniture or a tub for that matter and they wouldn't know that they need to stay tight to that toe kick as much as possible so any any words that you can put on there like even if it, it's not getting floor heating you could put hey this is where the shower is going to be this is where the vanity is this is where the tub is this is where the toilet is anything like that will always help the designer know what's going on in that space so then that next slide is we're going to get into the last question which is one of the most important questions before you leave that room where is the power location so with floor heat as sonia had mentioned with the three thermostats offering is that we want to be able to turn this floor heat on and off and we're going to do that with a thermostat with a custom mat you get to note where you want the lead wire to be off the all the way around the mat so you get to say i want the lead to be on this side or i want it to come over here or i want it to be here you get one spot so in this case you can see where that red arrow is or that red circle we're showing you that that is going to be where the thermostat location is going to be in that bathroom and then you want to tell us the power at which you want this mat to be quoted and made at so in this case this is a smaller bathroom anything under 150 square feet is definitely fine to be 120 volts so in this bathroom we would say thermostat location at 120 volts and then now we have every all the information we need to be able to get that mat drawn so that you have something to order to be able to ship out to that job site so if we go to the next spot there sonia then we have this final look we get one more quick look at what is the what what does it mean when i say perimeter as you can see the red line meaning all of the perimeter dimensions that you would have drawn first then measured from one side to the other as you go around the room writing down every single inch dimension once again rounding to the nearest quarter inch for the the best accuracy as possible and then the next slide sonia just gives you an overview of all the steps we just went through. And I do believe the next slide, we have the PDF. And here is the left-hand side of this slide is going to be your drawing. This is what we're looking for. So you have the perimeter layout, you have all your dimensions, you've got a little box that has the letter T for thermostat, and then you have where your vanity is gonna be, your cabinet, see there's another thing thrown in there, and then you have where your flanges for your toilet. This is a great drawing that this then, what's gonna look like is you go to the right-hand side of this slide, and once we put this through the CAD program, this is what the designer is gonna be able to draw. And you can see here, the, the area that is the heated area will be the, the shape inside all of these dimensions that have the little dots, and that's the mat itself. And note that you have that thermostat location in that top right-hand corner in the center of the mat itself it's going to tell you lead length is 10 feet long it's going to tell you your voltage your amperage draw and it's going to tell you your overall square footage or heated area that that custom mat's going to be this is the time that if you had made a mistake which once again things can happen maybe you missed a dimension or you you wrote it upside down or you forgot to write it down at this point the drawing would come back to you and it would have a circled dimension say hey can you look at this one more time we, this doesn't seem right in our program. Then you'd go back out to the job site or, or look at it and go, hey, you know what? That is should be 10 inches. And then you'll be able to then correspond with map of um, pay, get that fixed, and then you'll have a working drawing and you'll be able to move forward. If you don't have any red notifications on this drawing, this is ready to order and you can go ahead and place your order with a map pay distributor. Next slide, Sonia. And then now we have that product, okay? We've taken the time measuring for maybe 70 square foot mats probably going to take you roughly 10 minutes probably 
and then going through the process probably to get you a quote and a working drawing maybe within that 24 hours to 48 hours to get you back a drawing and then about a week and a half for it to show up it's a very fast process to be able to get a custom fit mat built to then fit like a glove on that job site the reason why you'd want to go with a custom mat is because all of your wires are machine space to guarantee you even heat distribution across that floor when it comes to radiant heat you want to make sure that when you're stepping on that floor it's going to be the same temperature from one side of the room all the way to the other side of the room and you're going to get that with a map of heat custom mat so out of the box how you're going to put that down is you're going to take a quarter by quarter square notch trowel you're going to spread that thin set out and right into that wet thin set you're going to push that electric blanket almost fabric uh, custom mat that you have and you're going to push that right into that wet thin set and then immediately right on top of that, you can thin set and set tile for tile and stone and for laminate or engineered or LVT floors, you're gonna to wanna to scratch coat that, let that dry, and then you'd float your floor on top of that. That is as easy as it gets. It is thin set, map of heat, thin set, tile, and you have a heated floor that fits like a glove. Perfect, great explanation. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, I did wanna point out that um, you, if so, if you're if you're if this is your first time hearing about custom um, custom heated floors, um, you might want to then find an installer who knows how to install these kinds of floors. Um, and I wanted to make you all aware that we have a Mapa Heat Pro installer program, where the installers are trained by us or New Heat, um, and they are listed on our website. And when you search for one of these installers, you can be assured that this professional has been trained in floor heating by Mape or New Heat. And these installers are recognized as electric floor heating experts. They are able to offer, in addition to the 25 year warranty, they're able to offer a lifetime system warranty if everything is being put down with Mape products. So the warranty that a pro installer is able to offer is a little bit more robust than what the warranty would be from a non-pro installer. Um, but non-pro installers are still able to offer product warranties. And all um, activations, once the floor is activated, the, red, the warranty needs to be registered within 30 days. And as a homeowner or contractor, you would do that at mapaheatwarranties.com. And um, also wanted to make everybody aware, just a warning, all electrical connections must be done by a licensed electrician. So this is a two trade install. So if you were looking for um, an installer to install not just custom floor heating, but any of the um, uh, floor heating products I had mentioned earlier, you would again go to our website and you would search Find a Mape Pro Installer. And there is um, the website, is down here below. You could just come onto the mapay.com website and then go into the floor heating section and there'll be a button um, how to find it. Uh, I think it's find an installer, find a pro, uh, a pro installer. You put in your zip code and then any installers in your area will pop up. So for instance, again, Newark, New Jersey, um, you can see uh, the listing of the variety of pro installers that um, are in that area. And then I also did Vancouver, Canada, so that you could see um, the listing of um, installers that are in Vancouver, Canada. And if you are a contractor and you're currently not a pro installer with New Heat or Mape, and you wanna become one, uh, we'd love to have you join the, the, the team. In the US, if you wanna be a pro installer, we do offer training on a regular basis. You would send an email to trainingusa at mapay.com or if you're in Canada, you would complete an online form and you would go to, you might wanna just take a picture of this or do a screen grab of this page and you would go to the can, uh, Canadian website and complete an online form and participate. And then you would get listed in that search engine earlier and homeowners would find you and maybe you'd get some extra business. So with that, that kind of concludes our um, presentation. Uh, you'll be able to treat your feet to map a heat custom map and uh, in, improve the living, um, your lifestyle and um, the value of your home. So we're gonna open it up for any questions. Dan and I will stay on for a few minutes. And I think Jen, our yep. illustrious. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. Yes, um, 
Let's see, we haven't gotten any in yet. I think people might be uh, feverishly typing. I'll give it a few, <laughs> a few uh, minutes here. Um, Do they have to ask their questions through the chat, or are they able to um, verbally ask the question? Through the chat, uh, the features on this uh, platform, they have to type it Q&A. Um, okay. Or uh, if they, like I, I said before, if they um, you know, are going about their day and gosh, something pops into their head, they can always send an email to mopaidigital at mopaid.com. And I will get it over to uh, the two of you, and we'll get them an answer right away. Um, you know, that's that's always an option as well. Uh, we want to make yep. sure that we make uh, this as easy as possible. And uh, you guys really have answered some questions because I know um, the thought of measuring a room terrifies me. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to think of all the more. questions, so hopefully we covered most of the questions in the presentation. Let's see. Uh, here's here's one question. Um, can you put Mapa Heat under a bed and furniture areas? Yes, Sonia, I'll jump in here. So the best way to think about this is you, you really don't want to honestly pay for a product you're never going to use. So typically you're not going to heat under, under a fixed piece of furniture or not even furniture, but like a, a vanity where it's going to be screwed to the back stud of the wall and it's never going to move so therefore you're not going to have floor heat underneath of it however when you have a bed bed has clearance you know there's it's probably off the floor about eight to ten or twelve inches and then the furniture if you were to not heat underneath there and you were to change the orientation of all of those pieces of furniture in your room then you're going to have a significant cold spot and you're not going to like it so when it comes to furniture i wouldn't really be concerned about heating underneath the bed or not, I would definitely heat the entire area and then um, only remove or not heat under things like you're not going to heat underneath the toilet, you're not going to be heating underneath of a vanity and stuff like that. But if it's the whole bedroom, I definitely would go wall to wall in there and not worry about where you're placing your furniture. That's a good question. Yeah, that was a very good question. Um, Okay, here, I see the drawing you provide. Can you talk about um, what a quote will contain and how it would tie to that drawing? So, how a little bit about that process. So the, 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 the drawing that the customer provides would get, gets converted to a CAD drawing. There might be a little bit of back and forth until everybody, until we're comfortable that the, the CAD, the final production ready CAD drawing is 100%. Then that drawing, the, the production ready CAD drawing, and the quote will go to the, the MAPE distributor. And the MAPE distributor will then send that production ready CAD drawing and the price to the customer, the customer in this case being the contractor or the homeowner. And then the customer will approve that price or won't will, or and will approve the drawing and then once that drawing and that order is is good to go with the distributor the distributor is going to place the order with mape there is a unique I, a number identifier that will get created for every single custom map request so along with that map of heat quote there will be a drawing number that is a number that is only specific to that custom map that you are ordering and therefore that you could reference back to if you need to update any dimensions or add a power location that maybe was missed or forgotten before you order. Yeah, and, and in some cases somebody might um, need the quote, they want to get an idea for how much it might cost, but the, the project isn't going to be constructed for months um, from a particular date and then they can reference that CAD drawing number and uh, it, it'll still be in our system and you could place that order at a later date which happens a lot. <laughs> that's that's helpful. I hope that that um, answered the question. Um, yeah, looks like it did. Okay, good. Um, give everybody a bit more time. See if there's anything else that comes in. Uh, Jen, what's the email address that they can email a question to if they missed it in the chat? 
It's MAPEI Digital, so M-A-P-E-I Digital, all one word, okay. at MAPEI.com. Perfect. Yep. And also, uh, I'd like to just invite everybody to go to the webpage, as you mentioned, to the MAPEI Heat uh, Flooring Systems webpage, because the not only is there grid paper that's downloadable, but there's also step-by-step um, -step instructions on how to do this. Um, I, I think that this uh, webinar is much clearer, <laughs> actually. But that's I'm a um, more of a, a learner by listening yeah. to somebody tell me. <laughs> and there is there is a brochure called How to Measure a Room. Exactly, exactly. And I was so just say. The, the 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 drawings of the room and the the points that Dan had mentioned are in that brochure. Exactly. And then in a few weeks time, probably two to three, we will uh, be posting this webinar, not only on the webinar page of uh, the MAPE website, but probably also on the MAPE Heat uh, webpage as well, just so that it's all kind of right there and contained and uh, easier to find. So, Perfect. Let's see. Yep. Exactly. Um, oh, can this be used on an exterior covered patio area? Exterior use. I'll, I'll let Dan answer that one. <laughs> Thanks. It's a question. So, all floor heat is UL approved for indoor applications. So, in that situation, then you would be in that area where if you have something overhead or uh, walls on it, we, you would typically be fine to be able to use electric radiant heat in that in that space. If you have a situation where there's no walls, it's more like a pavilion style. Even if it, you could put it in that environment. That would be the gray area. Um, technically, that would be considered an exterior area. Um, and the thing you have to realize is that radiant heat is the reason why it works is because you have something that is as a box on top of the floor, and that's your wall and your ceiling in your house, and that's going to trap that heat. So if you don't have walls or anything to keep the heat there, you're going to be putting a bunch of uh, electricity into that trying to warm that up, but the air blows through all that and it's going to take that heat away immediately. So not a whole lot's going to happen there. And you're, you're really just going to be spinning your meter for a whole lot of, of uh, not a whole lot of uh, performance there. So I would say it's indoor floor heating. So indoor, any room that you can find in, inside the house on a horizontal surface. So your bathroom floors, as Sonia mentioned in the beginning, your bathroom floor is going to be your main one, your kitchen, your entryway, family room, basements, and stuff like that. If it's a sunroom, where you'd have a, you still have a roof with walls around it, but it might be a different type of wall, like a glass wall or whatnot, that still would be considered indoor. But if it's typically a pavilion a tile where you're just having a roof, then that would be considered the exterior. You kind of would be out of our recommended installation practice. Perfect. Yep, good deal. All I right. want to I want to thank Dan for joining us today. Um, Envent New Heat is a great partner with MAPEI, and we're able to offer these products to the market because of our partnership with Envent New Heat. Dan's an excellent prevent, uh, presenter, very knowledgeable about this product, and um, we're thrilled that you were able to join us today. Thanks for having me, Sonia. Absolutely. Yep, and I want to thank you both for joining us because this has been just eye-opening. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks and, everybody. Uh, Thanks for joining. Yes, thank you. We know that uh, you know your days are very busy, and we really appreciate you taking some time out to join us. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time. Okay. This will conclude today's presentation. And again, Mape Digital at mape.com if you think of any more questions. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.